So you started your conducting lessons at 14. If you were to give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? I don't know, probably I'm, I'm not much wiser now so that I could give a good advice to, to myself. Um, I think everything I did from then to now is, was kind of necessary because you, know, you have to do mistakes and experience and um, it's part of myself. So um, you have to go through good and bad experience and every and to you know get to the next the next level so hard to say <laughs> what to you know i mean of course you would like to avoid mistakes or avoid certain things but if you don't do you know miss those mistakes you can't learn regarding mistakes what's the biggest mistake you've made as a conductor You know, there's so many little things that you can do that um, I can't really tell. Even if, you know, it, uh, do something really wrong, like beating something wrong or something, that is not particularly, uh, I mean, that can, always can happen. I think, um, I think it's more on the... Um, yeah, on a personal level, how you deal with with people, with human beings, with musicians. Uh. So you were talking about um, how you, you deal with musicians and all that. How would you describe the way you interact with the whole orchestra? Mm -hmm. I always try to um, create an atmosphere of atmosphere of um, respect. I think that is the most important um, thing for a conductor, how to work with an orchestra, just to face, just to be aware that those are all human beings. I mean, that sounds so stupid, but uh, it's so, it sounds so obvious, but I mean, if you treat everyone with the respect and uh, if you are aware that everyone of these musicians have their own life, have their own trouble, have their own interests and taste. If you are aware of that and respect that, I think you will also get the respect back from them. I noticed there was a really interesting dynamic between you and other musicians, uh -huh. like always smiling. <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> um, you've made your personal debut in December 2015 as a conductor and since then you've been working actively. What is the most fulfilling aspect of your life as a conductor? Oh, you know, concerts like tonight where you're on stage and just share your passion, your, you know, your love for the music and um, just share, just to do something for the moment, in the moment, spontane spontaneously and just to, to feel that everything you give you, you you know, has has an, a, a response or, or um, like that everyone is coming to an essence, to one idea of how the music in this moment, in this particular moment should be. And that is very fulfilling if you can get people together and convince them for, not really convince, but just to get them to a point that you you're feeling the, the same way, all together. I see. And now we're going to get to the questions about being a female. <laughs> <laughs> how did you manage, how did you strive as a female in a field that's mostly uh, dominated by men? Um, you know, I personally... Um, since there's no, not a male version of myself, and I probably won't be a male. I mean, you never know in these <laughs> days, but uh, let's say not. Um, uh, it, for me, it's useless to think about how it would be to conduct as a man. Um, I think the, the most important point is you will be um, perceived as 
complete human being and not only the chromosomes you, <laughs> you have, you know, yeah. and it's, it's not, um, and I think if you are concentrating on the music, everything else won't really matter. Mm -hmm. So you don't think there are differences between the way a woman conductor gestures? You and know, every, every conductor is different. Mm -hmm. And um, that, if, of course, a female conductor, if I would be male, is probably a little bit different, but you know, it's, um, but that's the good thing. It's maybe different, but you don't know if that's the matter of you know, gender or, or your personality or your even race, I don't know, or it can be anything, any part does influence something also, you know, like how tall you are or and how old you are, that also matters and affects something in a way or, you know, how your voice sounds or, um, I don't know, so there are so many aspects of a human being that the matters that influences it, to be female is just one part of it. One last question. Uh, I've read that your parents were uh, violin violinists. Violinist. Yes, and you started learning music since you were really young. So uh, musical education is really important for you. And I want to know how do you go about encouraging young people to listen to this type of music? Mm, um. I think just to, um, you know, you have to um, surround them with, with this music. It shouldn't be excluded or something where like all the adults go. I think you have, you can start early enough to, you know, en en engage, uh, to go to schools and show them and, you know, with your passion and all your your enthusiasm to um, you know just they just show them what what is so great about this music. I mean, like a piece like we did to tonight, Vojak's Eighth Symphony. That is, I mean, this if you you know if a, as a kid if you're open-minded and if you listen to that music, I I can't imagine that it's not something interesting at least let's say and um, I always um, would like for instance to do a concert like a rehearsal where the kids are not sitting in the audience like far away but just in the middle of the orchestra oh. I would love to do something like that mm -hmm. I think you know just it's not you know how, how, how it is to be in an orchestra and uh, I worked a lot with youth orchestras and you know it's so great to see how how they can really passionate about about classical music. Okay, thank you. That was all. <laughs>